walk with me. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the I am. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the I am knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Psalm of David, Psalms chapter 1. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts, and let them not lead me astray from thee, O God. Establish thou me in my seed forever, that we go not astray henceforth and forevermore. A prayer of Abram. Jubilees chapter 12 and verse 20. Yes, yes, yes. We thank God for you, you, and you. And we give God the praise. Yes, yes. We give God the praise for another beautiful day. You hear a lot of people talking about this. This eclipse and all these things and worrying about this and that. That's not for the believer. That's not for one who has, has been walking in the faith of Abraham. The faith of Abraham, it says, in death I'm blessed and in life I'm blessed. Either way, I'm blessed. I don't care how, what I'm going through or whatever, because my God has redeemed me. My God has, he has done great things for me. What is death? Separation from the body. Separation from your loved one. You don't fear those things, because who is your number one love? Who's your number one? Who's your number one? Who's your really, your, your bestie of your bestie? Is not the I am. It's not he who created all things. It's he, you, he who you communicate with daily. He's there with you even when your bestie, your human bestie is never there. This is God. And you must acknowledge him even as it says in Psalms chapter 37. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And he will direct your path. That means in your temptations, in your desires, whether they be good or evil. Acknowledge God. Acknowledge God. That way you become intimate with God. That way you become, your secrets are revealed to God. In all your ways. And he will direct your path. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Those of you on TikTok, YouTube. And we thank God for those of you that have been with us since the beginning. And we thank God for those of you who have joined us here and there's about. And we thank God for those of you that have just subscribed or follow we thank god for those of you that are about to subscribe or follow for we call those things that are not as though they are yes and we give the god the glory and praise just for you yes yes and we're in the book of jasher the book of jasher uh i had made a mistake one time i said chapter 11 or 12 let me get this right Sometimes I, I, I lose it myself. I'm in chapter 12. At chapter 12. We're in chapter 12 of the book of Jasher. Yes, chapter 12 of the book of Traf Chaf Jasher. <laughs> tongue twister. Now, that's a tongue twister. Yes, we're in chapter 12 of the book of Jasher, as you prepare. And verse 40. And Abraham left. Now, God delivered Abraham. Why? Because his ways please God. Now you can imagine what the psalmist said. When a man's ways please God, even his enemies are at peace with him. When they see you're not going to sway, you're not going to bend, you're not going to bow. And your God delivers you. Whoo, they're at peace with you. I know how that feels. I remember as a young man, the things that have happened to me. And my enemies could not say nothing, but that's God. I mean, everything in the book. But Abraham, the faith of Abraham. What is the faith of Abraham? What is the faith of Abraham? What is the confidence of Abraham? Isn't it not in the, the most high, in the way of the most high? 
The way of, the way of Abraham was not to bend to his father, not to bend to your family. He didn't bend to the king. In, in other words, he had more authority than the king in that he had the commandments, statutes, ordinances, and the law of the Most High. He said, are you so silly, old king? Yes, Abraham, the faith of Abraham. This here made God sit back and say, oh, that's my boy. Mm, that's my creation. Look at my creation. Look at what my creation is doing. Yes, to sit back and look at your children and how they stand up in all these things. I mean, he says, that's my creation. Look at that. He trusts me. He believes me. Hmm. And some of you think God is, <clears throat> excuse me, you think God is weak. No, sin is weaker. When you give in to temptations and when you give in to idolatry and all these things, that's weak. When you think your muscles and your money and your weaponry and your big uh, multitude of people is going to get you over in this land, it gets you over in this life somewhat. But that's weak. But when you can stand as one man before a multitude and say what the Most High says or say your conviction that you will stand regardless of your death or your life, that you are going to stand with God in the midst of those who are most powerful among men, then you saying something, that's power. Now, don't mean go out and act a fool without, without knowledge. Abram had knowledge. Now, let's get into verse 41. And Abram went forth from the king in peace, in peace. And many of the king's servants followed him, and about 300 men joined him. Yes, yes, they, they joined him. You have to realize, it, they joined him because they said, some, we want to learn what makes this man so vehement, so in love with his God, so believing. And we trust that he's going to teach us the way of the Most High, that we might be the same as he. Now, this is what it's all about. Now, you, you hear it in your New Testament where the, Writer says, follow me as I follow his, his Isis or whatever. But the fact is, is that follow God. Even the New Testament tell you, follow God as dear children. Now, if someone is following God, following the Most High, Tata and Zami, Sinini, Nainini, Yahweh, Yahuwah, hey, yeah, hey, if he's doing these things, then you want to know what is causing this. You can build around. It's just like faith. The birds come in and find nestings, and they come in and out because they see something that they can pattern their life after. after, after of, excuse me. Tongue twister there. Now, in verse 42, Abraham returned on that day to his father's house. He and the men that followed him, and Abraham served the I am his God all the days of his life, and he walked in his ways and followed his law. Ah, <laughs> Yes. This is what God did. Now, Abraham followed the law of the Most High. Now, what had happened was these men followed him. Now, look, look, what, look what's happening. He had, as he followed God's law, he taught these men and their families God's law, his law. Yes, because he received those things from Noah. See, the law was there. Shem, Ham, Jepheth, all of them. You, you Africans, you Australians, you South Americans, all of you, regardless of what language you speak, you know the law. The law was taught to your fathers. Either way, the law was taught to your fathers. You, were, you didn't start out no, no pagan. You didn't start out doing witchcraft or talking to the ancestors. No, you wasn't doing those things. You were worshiping God. He was worshiping the ruler and the creator of all things. No, he's not a sky daddy. He's right there. If you call him, he's right there. But he's not going to, he's just because you do a magician, show me your tricks so I can believe. You're not going to believe. God showed you all kinds of miracles. If they did that back then, how, what do you think they're going to do now? Somebody did something on yesterday to Moses old and they don't believe it no more. This is how Satan's have got you. 
Now, Abraham returned on that day. Now, he had people following him because they wanted to learn God's ways because they saw God in him. And 43, and from that day forth, Abraham inclined the hearts of the sons of men to serve the I am. In other words, he's saying serve God, serve him. How do you serve him? Believe on him, follow his law. That's serving. Teach his ways. Pray. This is serving God. And at that time, Nahor and Abraham took unto themselves wives. The daughters of their brother Haran, the wife of Nahor, was Milcah, and the name of Abraham's wife was Sarah. And Sarah, wife of Abraham, was bearing, and she had no offspring in those days. Now we're getting into something else. And at that expiration of two years from Abraham's going out of the fire that is in the 52nd year of his life, behold, King Nimrod sat in Babel upon the throne, and the king fell asleep and dreamed that he was standing with his troops and hosts in the valley opposite the king's furnace. Come on him. And he lifted up his eyes and saw a man in the likeness of Abram coming forth from the furnace. And that, and that he came and stood before the king with his drawn sword, then sprang to the king with his sword. And when the king fled from the man, for he was afraid, and while he was running, the man threw an egg upon the king's head. And the egg became a great river. Oh, what's good? this is a weird dream here. And the king dreamed that all his troops sank in that river and died. And the king took flight with three men who were before him, and he escaped. And the king looked at these men, and they were clothed in pricely dresses and as garments of kings and had the appearance of majesty of kings and and while they were running, the river again turned to an egg before the king. And there forth came from the egg a young bird, which before the king, and flew at his head and plucked out the king's eyes. He could not see. And the king was grieved at the sight, and he woke out of the sleep, and his spirit was agitated. And he felt a great terror. You know, what is this, Abraham coming at me? Dreams. Sometimes dreams can be because you ate a pizza dinner. But then a lot of times dreams can be because there's an angel or a messenger from the Most High that is telling you something. Sometimes he will appear, he will appear as those of you what you are familiar with. Many times as you, your familiarity, he will appear and do things with those things you are familiar with. And you wonder why do people have these dreams? Yes, in the last days, and even in those days, people have dreamed dreams. They have saw visions. Some not even, not even believing on the Most High still have done it. Now, and the wise servant in verse 52 of the king, whose name was Anuki, not the Ananaki. Now, I think those of you who deal with that, you, you, you're, you're pagan. Answered the king, saying, this is nothing else but the evil of Abram. <laughs> Look at him, the Anoki, Ananaki, or whatever you want to call him. Yes, this is nothing evil, but of Abram and his seed, which will spring up against my Lord and king in the latter days. Now, what is he talking about? And behold, the day will come when Abraham and his seed and children of his house will hold war with my king, and they will smite the king's host and his troops. Now, to me, this is what he's talking about. He's talking about when the children of Israel was delivered out of Egypt because Nimrod is part of that, the children of Ham. And what had happened was, yes, he chased after them, and what happened? He followed them through the water, and the water overshadowed them. Now he says, look at what he says, 54, And as to what thou hast said concerning three men which thou see like unto thyself, which did escape, this means that only thou wilt escape with three kings from the kings of the earth who will be with thee in battle and that which thou sawest of the river which turned to an egg at first the young bird plucking out the eyes this means nothing else but the seed of Abraham which will slay the king in latter days so that's what happened but now you have it's overran Egypt is overran with all with Arabs people who have nothing to do with the king even Pharaoh or the ancient Egyptians, nothing. Many people want to go back to Egypt in their ways and their beliefs. 
and their practices. And this is what God tells you, do not run to Egypt. This is a spiritual saying too, don't run to Egypt, stay where you are. And this is my king's dream, and this is his interpretation. The dream is true, and the interpretation which thy servant has given thee is right. And now, therefore, my king, surely thou knowest that it is now 52 years since the sages saw at this birth of the Abraham that if the king will suffer Abraham to live in the earth, it will be to the injury of my lord and king. For all the days of Abraham liveth, neither thou nor thy kingdom will be established. For this was known formerly at his birth. And why will not my king slay him, that his evil may be kept from thee in the latter days? And Nimrod hearkened to the voice of Anuki. And he sent some of his servants in secret. Could that be Anunnaki too? I mean, maybe I was mistaken saying that's not an Anunnaki. That might be who he is. The voice of Anuki, one of the sages. One of the men that probably dreamed dreams. He was, he was led by devils. Wrote, probably wrote books. Hey, anything is possible. And he sent some of his servants in secret to go and seize Abram and bring him before the king to suffer death. And Eliezer, Abram's servant, whom the king had given him, was at the time in the presence of the king. He heard what Anuki and Anuki had advised the king and what the king had said to cause Abram's death. And the Eliezer said to Abram, Hassan, rise up and save thy soul, for thy that thou mayest not die through the hands of the king. For thus he did see in a dream concerning thee, and thus did Anuki interpret it. All right. Anuki. Ananaki. Anuki. Huh. That's something to dig into. And thus also did Anuki advise the king concerning thee. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Eliezer. And Abram hastened and ran for safety to the house of Noah, his son, and his son Shem. And he concealed himself there and found a place of safety. And the king's servants came to Abram's house to seek him, but they could not find him. I see, they're not going to touch Shem. They're not going to touch Noah. That's their daddy. That's the grandfather of them all. He lived a long time, and they knew, Nimrod knew who he was, and him, his, his uncle was. Come on, him. Now, but they could not find him. And they searched throughout the country, and he was not to be found and they went and searched in every direction and he was not to be met with and when the king's servants could not find Abraham they returned to the king but the king's anger against Abraham was stilled you know what God just calmed his heart <laughs> ain't that God ain't that God he's so beautiful isn't he yes and they did not find him and the king drove from his mind this matter concerning Abraham no that was God drove from his mind and Abraham was concealed in Noah's house for one month until the king had forgotten this matter. But Abraham was still afraid of the king. And Terah came to see Abraham, his son, secretly. I mean, his own father who betrayed his own son. Now, did not this was even prophesied even your New Testament. Where because of this good news, people would betray each other. Now, secretly in the house of Noah, and Terah was very great in the eyes of the king because Terah told the king true because he's afraid of him, right? And Abraham said to his father, Dost thou not know that the king thinketh to slay me and to annihilate my name from the earth by the advice of his wicked counselors? Anuki or Ananaki? Anuki, the Anna. Okay, we're going to see. And now thou hast here what thou hast in this land. Arise and let us go together to the land of Canaan, that we might be delivered from his hand, lest he perish also through him in the latter days and dost thou not know or hast thou had not heard that it is not through the love that Nimrod giveth thee all this honor but it is only for his benefit that he bestowed all his good before the, upon thee and if he do unto thee greater good than this surely these are only vanities of the world for wealth and riches cannot avail in the day of the wrath of wrath and anger and with that we're going to say peace.